Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. So if you guys are fellow small business owners, freelancers, social media managers, you guys might be experiencing the lull that everybody seems to ask me about at this time of the year. My Facebook group is packed with questions about like, okay, like why is it so quiet right now? And I feel you. It's the end of Q4, like people are winding down their years. So it can be a little bit of a trickier time to actually get new clients. Uh, but I like to make sure that I'm still staying busy. I think the end of the year is, is slow for a number of reasons. I think we could talk about that all day, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about what to do during those slow times, especially like towards the end of the year and some good ways, five good ways in fact, to like refresh and renew your business so that in 2019 or the following year, you're ready to go and find yourself some clients and you're like off on the right foot. So the first thing that I like to do at this time of year is clean up my social media and my clients' social media or any accounts that I'm managing social media. So I'll go through who we're following and just make sure that all of those you know accounts are still active and still relevant. Sometimes people people change up their accounts to something totally different than what you follow them for. And you know, it's it helps you and it helps them. Sometimes it can feel a little mean unfollowing people, but it's helpful, more helpful for them to have like a truly niche engaged audience that wants their content. So I do that. I also go through and make sure that the people who I'm following are still active. Sometimes I know that I followed this really cute account. It was like grunge fawn or something. It was like amazing inspo, but they hadn't posted in like two years. So what's the point of following them anymore? So just go through and do that. This is really a great practice, not just like, I don't know, it's somewhat satisfying for yourself, but it's also nice because it makes your feeds so much better. Whenever I go through that, and I actually did this for YouTube recently too, uh, whenever I do that, my feeds end up so much better and I find myself engaging with the content so much more. Number two is a really big one, really important. You should really be doing this all year long, but especially at the end of the year, analyze your, the results of campaigns that you've run throughout the year or things that worked, things that didn't work. Just take a look at your metrics, take a deep dive into your metrics. Let me know if you guys would like me to do a video on maybe like YouTube metrics or Instagram metrics or Facebook metrics, what I pay attention to. The, uh, the YouTube studio app is amazing. It's my favorite thing ever. And I could look at it all day. It tells you so much about where your audience is coming from, what keywords are trending, like where people are finding you, how, what people are searching for to find your videos, um, all of that kind of stuff. And the reason that I want you to spend a lot of time with this is because it really helps you understand what to do next year. You know, um, if you spent a ton of time, a ton of effort, a ton of money producing holiday content or content around the holidays and it just didn't yield the results that you were looking for, don't do it again next year. Like spend that time either with your family or doing something else that's a little bit more um, important and that's gonna deliver a little bit more, more ROI for you. So pay attention to numbers, spend a lot of time with your metrics and your analytics. Once you've looked at your analytics, go ahead and build out your calendars for the next year. So I build out a year long calendar, like a content slash promotional calendar. I don't really separate the two. I just kind of have one calendar for my stuff. And what I'll do is I'll do a yearly content calendar. So, okay, I know in January, I'm gonna be focusing a lot of my content on my uh, workshop that's coming up on January 13th. I know that I'm gonna do, be doing a lot of content in those couple weeks before the workshop leading up to that. So, you know, I'll make sure to write that in. In February, I don't really know what's going on. So whatever, just go month by month and, and knock out, you know, write down any key dates or key events that are gonna be happening key holidays that are relevant to your business, that kind of thing. And then, you know, okay, I know that in February, Valentine's Day is coming up. So for the promotional side of my calendar, I'm gonna write, maybe I'll do a Valentine's Day sale because, hey, I love you guys, you know? Let's, let's hang out and be friends and stuff. Maybe I'll do a Valentine's Day sale for my courses. So, you know, write down those things so that you're already planning for those things and go all the way out. And then what I do from there is quarter by quarter. So like on January 1st, then I'll sit down with that big calendar and I'll sit down and do January, February, March, and I'll do a really detailed version of that. So I'll do week by week, you know, I'll break it down and really get granular um, and talk about, you know, key days, not just like key months or trends or seasons. I'll actually get into days and actually start scheduling stuff out. So now is a great time to start. I mean, I know it sounds, sounds a little wild to start planning for 2019, 
but it's basically here. And I think the problem that a lot of people run into is that they do this stuff like willy nilly and last minute and it's not truly planned out. We all do that, I do that. I mean, oh my gosh. I, I decided I wasn't gonna do a Black Friday sale this year and then I ended up building a Black Friday sale like the day before. I was like, what am I doing? Actually, yeah, I was on Thanksgiving. I was building, like, don't do that. You know, have that stuff ready, have it planned out, know what you're doing so it's, you know, a seamless thing. Another thing, this is one that I often forget about and I really, really need to do. This is, this is my reminder. You guys hold me accountable. Update your websites. I haven't updated my website in so long. Uh, like my, my photos are really old and not that great. Like not great at all. So update your photos, you know, update. Um, I have a page on there that lists out my speaking gigs that I've done. I haven't updated any of my 2018 speaking gigs yet. Update any new service offerings that you've been doing. I do mentorships and I don't have them listed anywhere on my website. It's just like word of mouth, which is good because I'm not overwhelmed. Um, but I would like to start advertising and promoting that. So, you know, add any new services, new photos, um, new accomplishments that you want to list. Um, update your bio. I know I've seen some people's bios on their websites and they'll be like, oh yeah, I've been doing social media for three years. And I'm like, you've been doing social media for like eight and you just never updated it. You know, it's really easy to forget about. So just make a point at the end or beginning of every single year to go through and just do a refresh of your website, just update dates and, and key things like that. All right, and then lastly, another thing that I like to do at this time of year is ask my clients for testimonials and referrals. I think that it's a really quiet time of year generally for myself, for clients, so it's a good time to check in. And it's also a good time to check in just to be a good person and with former clients too. So a lot of times, you know, if we just don't work out um, at that time, um, I'll use the holiday time as a time to re-engage with my past clients, just to check in, see how their businesses are going, see if they need any help um, in the next year, see what's up, you know? And then for my existing clients, ask them, you know, it's like I said, it's generally a pretty slow time of year, so they might have a little extra time to sit down and write a testimonial for me or um, to refer anybody, any new business. And I do offer a referral uh, bonus to my clients. I detail that in my course. Um, I, I think I, yeah, I don't think I've done a video on it, but I did do a video in my course, A Journey Social. I talk about like the, a little bit more details of what my referral program is, but basically they just get, you know, a little bit of a percentage or a dollar amount off of their next month's social media service if they refer a client who signs with me. So that's just a nice way to, you know, increase your business while really not doing a whole lot. It can just be an email, maybe write a card for them, um, maybe do something a little bit more nice if you feel like it, like send some flowers or chocolates or something like that. But it's really just a check in and asking for those things. Um, I often forget to ask for referrals until I really need them and then my clients are busy and I'm busy and you know, it's just a good, good thing to do every year. All right, so I hope that this video was helpful. I hope it gave you a couple of ideas of things that you can start doing with your business in this kind of slower time. Let me know if it was helpful. Let me know in the comments down below. You can also thumbs up this video. It means a lot to me and it helps me know what types of content is resonating with you guys. So thank you guys so much. Links that I mentioned will be in the description box and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.